God said, this is the man that's going to carry out my judgment. Don't you know that when God gets ready to carry out judgment, it's going to happen? God is not going to choose somebody who's going to turn their back on him. He's going to always choose somebody who's going to carry out his plan. God does not have a bunch of weak people running around for him. I know that we've got this mentality that Christians are supposed to be weak and quiet. I want to say to you, God has called you in this day to stand and to stand strong. When God tells you to do something, you do it. Whatever assignment you're called to do, you just fulfill it. Amen. So you got Jehu now being called by God in the book of 2 Kings uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. You have him now being called. Now I want you to understand a little bit about Jehu. Jehu in the Hebrew means Jehovah is he. In other words, Jehovah being God, this man is authorized to act for me. So when you say Jehu, you saying Jehovah is he. In other words, he's authorized to do my work. He's authorized to step in the situation. He's authorized to fix the situation. He's authorized to correct you. He's authorized to knock you down. He's authorized to do whatever I tell him to do. Thank you, Jesus. See, they thought a man was coming to carry out the judgment. This was a man who was authorized by God to carry out the judgment. Je Jehu, again, is Jehovah is he. Amen. Jehu, one of the captains of Israel's army. Uh huh. Verse 1 says, And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go up and go to Ramoth Gilead. <laughs> now, Elisha being the senior prophet, a man of the house, tells one of the children of the prophets, in other words, a young prophet, to go and carry out this mission. Amen. I want you to understand something. Ramoth Gilead, amen, at the end of verse 1, in the Hebrew means the heights of Gilead. In other words, I want you to go up with a box of oil, and the oil represents the anointing. I want you to go up with the anointing. I want you to go up with the anointing, and I want you to take this in your hand. This is why God says to us, when I've anointed you to do something, get up and go do it, because now you are authorized. God is not caught up in indecision. He's not saying, who can I send? I don't know who to... God already knows who can take care of his business. So Elisha calls one of the young prophets and says, take this oil, take this box of oil to Ramoth Gilead. In other words, take it up. Amen. Take this anointing in your hand. Amen. Amen. I want you to anoint this man. Now, why is he going to anoint Jehu? He's not going just to anoint him to take care of God's business. He's anointing him to be the king over Israel. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do you not understand that God is not going to waste his anointing on somebody who doesn't have purpose? God isn't going to waste his anointing on somebody who's not going to do anything for him. God's not going to waste his anointing on somebody who's going to sit on their seat all the time and never get out and do any work. God isn't going to waste his anointing on anybody who doesn't believe him. God isn't going to waste his anointing on anybody who doesn't trust him. God is not going to waste his anointing on people who are going to sit back and talk instead of take action. God does not work like that. God watches you and he sees that you're going to take action. He will anoint you to do things. He will bless you if you have the faith. But a lot of times we sit in the background and say, why am I not anointed? Why am I not being called? Why am I not being chosen? Because we're not doing anything. God is not going to anoint you to do special things if you're not doing anything. Amen. So God already knew that Jehu was, first of all, already a captain in the army. He was already carrying out missions. He was already doing what he was told. Amen. So now he anoints him to be king over Israel. Amen. Amen. So we have a situation now that, okay, he's now anointed to be the king of Israel. Now God says he's anointed for some other things. What is he anointed for? He's anointed to smite the house of Ahab. The word smite means to kill, to, to hurt, to destroy. 
God says, I have anointed you to smite the house of Ahab. In other words, they've done so much wrong. We just need to cut their line out of history. We need to cut them down. We need to carry their generation out of history. Amen. Take them off the record books. Amen. So now you're going to smite the house of Ahab to avenge the blood of the prophets Amen. and all the servants of the Lord. Amen. Uh-oh. Who died at the hands of Jezebel. Some of you who know the story of Jezebel, she was a trickster. She was a person who would trick not only those who were unsaved, but those who were saved. She would trick the prophets. She would kill prophets. She was there to destroy God's agenda. And in her destroying God, in his own infinite wisdom, decided there was someone who could take care of her. Amen. So he did assign Jehu to take care of this situation. Amen. I want to jump back to verse 3 because I want to talk a little bit about the young prophet and how God had told him to go anoint him and not to tarry. Amen. I want you to understand that the young prophet was under assignment. Amen. The young man was under assignment. What that means is God assigned him to do one thing, carry out his assignment, and to go on his way. Sometimes God sends you on an assignment, and God simply wants you to do what he asks, and then he wants you to go on your way. Sometimes we get caught up in the assignment, and now we want to talk. We want to sit around. We want to discuss it. We want to make a, a, a big situation out of it. And God says to have maximum effect. Just do what I ask you to do. Sometimes we want to make a big deal of it. Yeah, God, he, he called me to do this. Yeah, I'm special. And God is saying, I didn't tell you to say all that. I didn't tell you to do all that. All I asked you to do was to relate a message and go on your way. So the young prophet did as he was told. Amen. That's why God doesn't trust some of us. Because some of us don't know how to carry out our assignment. We get caught up in who we are and, and who God has called us to be and how wonderful we are. And God is saying, I didn't ask you to do all that. I didn't ask you to say all that. Why are you running off at the mouth? All you need to do is what I've asked you to do and go on your way. So now we have a situation here. Jehu has done what? Jehu has been anointed, amen. The young man has left, amen. He's anointed to be king of Israel, and he's also anointed to uh, avenge the blood of the prophets, amen, by smiting the house of Ahab, amen. Ahab's already dead, is that right? So all we have left is Jezebel, amen. Jezebel has carried on the work that she had started with Ahab, amen. Amen. Let's jump down in this reading uh, 2 Kings verses 9, uh, 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 14 through 18. Let's go down to that reading. So Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, con conspired against Joram to dethrone and slay him. Now Joram was holding Ramah Gilead and all Israel against Hazel, king of Syria. But King Joram had returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given when he had fought Hazel, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If this is your mind, let no one make his escape from the city, Ramoth Gilly, to go in and tell it to Jezreel the captain. So Jehu arose in a chariot and went to Jezreel for Joram to lay there. And then Hiza, king of Judah, had come down to see Joram. A watchman in the tower in Jezreel spake by the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Send that horseman to meet them and have him ask, Do you come in peace? So one on horseback went to meet him and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What have you to do with peace? Reign in behind me. And the watchman reported, The messenger came to them, but he does not return. Amen. Do we understand this? Amen. Now we have a situation <laughs> where judgment is about to fall. Amen. Yeah. King Joram. Amen. He he was against Israel, amen. His goal was to take over. But King Joram was not on God's side, amen. So the Bible says that Jehu conspired against Joram. In other words, he got a plan together. Amen. How can I take him out? Amen. So now he finds out that Joram is being taken back to his own country, amen, to be healed in Jezreel. Oh, my goodness. Jezreel is a key spot. Because 
the Syrians had wounded Joram. And he was like, I got to get out of here. I got to get my wounds bound up. I got to get healed. I got to get myself back together. Amen. And in his wanting to get healed, Jehu said, now we have to get a plan against him. Amen. Verse 16. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel. Uh-oh. Sounds like that's the same place that Joram is. Now I'm going to where trouble is. Sometimes when you serve God, you have to go exactly where trouble is. Sometimes we want to run away from trouble, and sometimes God is sending you to deal with trouble. So you, as a Christian, you have to say to yourself, I can't expect easy assignments from God. I have to go where the trouble is. Because Jehu knew one thing. I'm anointed for this purpose. I don't care who's there. I don't care what opposition I get. I don't care who stands in my way. God has anointed me for this situation. And I know with God's anointing, I'm going to come out on top. So now Jehu goes to Jezreel. Amen. <laughs> for, Jer for Joram laid there. Amen. And, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. Uh-oh. Another king was coming to visit. My friend is sick. He hurting. He's in pain. I'm going to go down and visit with King Joram. See, but the problem with that is, is King Ahaziah also was against God's program. Ever heard the term killing two birds with one stone? Amen. Amen. <laughs> God allowed Ahaziah to come visit Joram, and now two of God's enemies are in the same place. So as we read a little further down, amen, 17, and there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. <laughs> and Joram said, take a horseman and send to meet them and let him say, is it peace? See, Joram wasn't, wasn't crazy. He knew, he knew that a word was coming against. He knew that a judgment was coming against. So he was like, well, I see a company coming. Uh, find out if they're going to get us or not. Find out if they're against us or for us. Ask them, is it peace? Amen. If they say it is peace, that means that they weren't looking to fight against them. Amen. Verse 18. So there went one on horseback to meet him. Amen. And said, thus saith the king, is it peace? And Jehu said, what hast thou to do with peace? <laughs> Turn thee behind me. In other words, what, what do you have to do with peace? <laughs> Jehu knew he was on an assignment to destroy, so he wasn't going to say it was peace. He said, what do you have to do with peace? Amen. Either you get with me or you're against me. Yes, so he said, turn behind me. In other words, get on my team or be on the opposing team. We talked a little earlier about football. You know if you're on your team, your team wears one set color and they have, the other team has a different color. And you know everybody who wears the same uniform as you, you go against the other team. Is that right? Amen. So now Jehu is saying, I want you to get on my team or you're going to be against me. Amen. So verse 18 says, and the watchman told, saying, the messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. In other words, we don't know what happened to the messenger. I did send him. We saw him go, but he never came back. Amen. I want you to go a little further. Let's get uh, verses 19 and 20. Then Joram sent out a second man on horseback who came to them and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? Jehu replied, What have you to do with peace? Ride behind me. And the watchman reported, He came to them but does not return. Also, the driving is like the driving of Jehu, son of Nimshi, for he drives furiously. Uh -huh. See, they sent out a second horseman. They said, Okay, the first guy didn't come back. Let's send out another guy. Amen. <sighs> We looking, okay, I see him, he's, he's driving up to the company, I see him, and he's going all the way down to the company. Amen. <laughs> and he's going all the way to the company, amen? amen. So he's there, amen? amen. <laughs> he sees Jehu, amen? amen? Jehu is waiting to see what he has to say. Amen. amen. Now, we have a situation where evil is coming to meet good. Don't you know in your life, King Joram tries to warn King Ahaziah, amen, verses 20, I believe it's verse 23 of the reading, amen. 
Yes, and Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. Amen. Verse 24, And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms, and the arrow went out at his heart. You mean to tell me one of God's people pulled the bow back, struck him in the back, and an arrow came through his heart? I told you Jehu was sent for judgment. He wasn't there to play games. Well, how you doing, King? Oh, it's nice to see you. Good. To, oh, I really like what you got on. No, it's time for judgment. Amen. I told you if you wasn't for me, you were against me. Is it Jehu? Is it peace? No, not as long as you alive. <laughs> Jehu said, no, I'm here to take care of the situation because of you and your mother Jezebel. You guys have caused problems. Amen. You have caused the whoredoms and the witchcrafts of the people. Now I have to do something about it. Amen. Let's read verses 25 through 27. Amen. Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, Take Joram up and cast him in the plot of Naboth, the Jezreelite field. For remember how when I and you rose together after Ahab, his father, the Lord uttered this prophecy against him. As surely as I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son say, the Lord, I will repay you on this plot of ground, says the Lord. Now therefore, take and cast Joram into the plot of the ground of Naboth, as the word of the Lord has said. Amen. That's good enough right there. Amen. See, now God is saying, I, I want you to I want you to, to, to remember. Amen. See, Naboth got killed and it was illegal. Amen. He should not have died. But now, since the king and all of his friends had plotted, amen, and come against the plan of God, now I want you to kill him and throw him in the same plot of ground. Amen, amen. Because I didn't forget. In other words, God said, I remember. Amen. I remember what happened to Nabal. I remember that it was unjust. Amen. I want you to make sure that he dies. Amen. And put him in the same field. Amen. amen. Because, see, this was the burden that God had laid on Jehu. <laughs> Don't you know when God gives you a word to speak or something to do, that is an assignment from God? And if you don't do it, there's a burden that's placed on you? Amen. Try this if you want to. If God tells you to do something, if you don't do it, it, it will get heavy. And every day, it will get heavier and heavier and heavier. And after a while, it will be so heavy that all you'll think about is the thing that God told you to do. I would say to you, the best thing to do is to do it as soon as you possibly can, amen, to get that burden off of you, amen. So as we drop down in our reading, amen, we find out that King Joram, amen, was being chased, amen, by Jehu, amen. And then we find that Joram then tries to warn King Isaiah, and he says, there is treachery, O Ahaziah, amen. And, God, and uh, Jehu then kills Jehoram, amen. Then, verse 27, when Ahaziah saw this, amen, when he saw that his friend was killed, amen, he fled by way of the garden house, and Jehu followed after him and said, smite him also in the chariot. <laughs> and they did so at the going up to Gur, amen, which is by Iblim, and fled to Megiddo, amen, and died there, amen. Mm -hmm. Now. We see that Jehu has carried out his assignment, amen? He's, everybody who stood in his way, he has taken them out. But he's done all this to get to Jezebel. Because Jezebel is his main assignment, amen? Let's drop down to uh, verses, amen? Verses 30, amen, through 33, amen? Now when Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her eyes and beautified her head and looked out of an upper window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Have you come in peace, you Zimri who slew the master? Jehu lifted up his face in the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three of the Enoch looked down at him. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses, and he drove over her. Amen. See, Jezebel got hers. Because Jezebel, she saw Jehu coming, and she thought instead of running, she said, I'll put a plan together. So the Bible says she got herself together. She painted her face, got her hair together, Amen. waiting for Jehu. Thought that she could trick him with her beauty. Oh, my goodness. Don't you know when God sends you on assignment, there will be people who will try to distract you from your job. There will be people who will try to keep you from doing what God has told you to do. 
She knew Jay Hugh was coming to kill her. She talking about is it peace? Now you know you done sort of all this problem and all this trouble. You done caused people to be losing their lives. You done tricked them out of their land. You done manipulated them. You done killed priests and prophets. And now you talking about is it peace? Yeah, amen. 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 Jezebel saw him coming. And she says in verse 31. Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? In other words, Zimri is a praiser. See, a lot of people don't know what the word Zimri means. A, Zim, a person who, of Zimri was somebody who was dedicated and set out to praise God. So she was like, is there peace, O oh, praiser? Oh, the one who prays. I know that you praise. Uh, is there peace? And I know Jay, he was probably thinking, ain't no praise going on right now. I'm about to take care of business because I'm here on assignment and God has told me to be here to take care of you. Amen. Verse 32, and he lifted up his face to the window because she was standing, sitting out the window and said, who is on my side? I want to know if you're with me. Or against me. This, this is what we ought to start saying to ourselves as saints of God. We have to remember that God, amen, is the reason, amen, that we are on the right side. Amen. That's right. Stop going through the motions with a bunch of people trying to find out what side. No, no. Find out if they're on God's side or not. He said, who is on my side? Amen. And he said, Who? <laughs> And they looked out to him two or three eunuchs. Eunuchs were people who were, were basically dedicated to serve in the palace all the days of their life. Dedicated to serve the king, the queen, and every other person in the palace. They were dedicated to serve. And after Jehu said, who's on my side? Who? They, the Bible says two or three eunuchs looked out and said, hey, <laughs> that guy don't play. <laughs> we, we're not going out like these other people went out. Uh, I suggest we do something here. Amen. And so then Jehu says, verse 33, throw her down. The eunuch said it's going to either be her or us. I suggest we throw her down. <laughs> threw her right out the window. The Bible says her blood splattered against the wall. Is that right? Amen. King James says, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall, amen, and on the horses, amen. And he, being Jehu, trod her underfoot. In other words, he saw her fall and hit the wall, and he backed up his chariot and said, let me just roll my wheels over you. Oh, did I get you yet? Let me go, let me go forward. Oh, did I get you yet? Let me, go, let, me move over. let me just run you over because God said you was going to die and you was going to be killed by the chariot. So now you have to face judgment. <laughs> he trampled her with his chariot, amen. Verse number 36, and then I'm going to let you go. They came again and told Jehu. He said, this is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, and portion of Je Jezreel shall dog thee the flesh of Jezebel. Amen. Let's, let's, okay, let me, amen, let me back up. Amen. I want to just give you, amen, a little bit more, Amen. Verse 35. Could I have my reader read verse 35? Amen. They went to bury her, but would they found nothing left of her except the skull, feet, and palms of her hand. Amen. She was so far gone. There wasn't a body to bury. Amen. Verse 40, 34 tells us that she was the daughter of a king, so they wanted to give her an honorable burial. Amen. <laughs> when they went out to find her, all that was left was her skull, her feet, and the palms of her hands. The prophecy said that she would be eaten by the dogs, amen, and all that was left, amen, is what the dogs didn't eat. That's right, amen. This is why when you serve God, you have to realize that judgment is going to come to those who come against you, amen. And God will call you, amen, if you have a Jehu anointing to stand up and to cause judgment to ring out in this earth, amen. God has told us on an occasion that we have the Jehu anointing, amen. The Jehu anointing is not to go out and physically kill people, but now it's to pronounce judgment as God has said. God has told us this, and we need to understand that we are not called to be soft, weak, jelly-back Christians. We are here to stand up for what's right. We're here to see that judgment be, be, be done in this earth. We're here to make sure that those who do not love God, amen, be called out. 
Amen. The anointing of Jehu simply means that we have been anointed by God for his purpose. Amen. And our sole desire is to accomplish his will. Amen. So that means when God calls you to do something, you do it. You don't question God when he asks you to do something. Amen. The problem with this world so far and the Christians of it, amen, is that we haven't done what God has told us to do. Amen. There would be more people in our churches. There would be more people saved. There would be more people added to the kingdom of God if we were out doing all that God had told us to do. Amen. Sometimes when God tells us to do things, we find other things to do. And we replace God's system with other things. I want to say to you today, and this is a challenge to you and everyone who's watching this broadcast, that now is the time to do God's will. Now is the time to stop saying what you won't do and start saying what you will do. Stop saying you don't have time and make time. Stop saying I don't have the opportunity and make an opportunity. Because God wants you to do his will at all times. Amen. This is the power of a Jehu anointing. God called Jehu to do a work, and he did it. He didn't stop before the time. He didn't say, God, I can't do it. He simply moved out on what God said. Amen? Amen. Put your hands together for the word today. Amen. Amen. We're going to say a prayer. Amen. We want to pray. Amen. For all those who are unsaved out there. Amen. Those who need God. Amen. We want to pray now. And if you follow along this prayer and you're unsaved, you will be saved at the end of this prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for those uh, who are unsaved, God. We ask right now, God, that you will lead the unsaved into this prayer, God. I believe, amen, that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, amen, by you, God. We believe that he died for our sins, God. We believe, God, that you have forgiven us for our sins if we repent, God. We believe this even now. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will save us from our sins. We de desire not to go back into the world. We desire to live for you. The enemy cannot trespass on our ground because we are now saved. Amen. We believe in our heart. Amen. And we testify with our lips that you were risen from the dead. Amen. And that God lifted you up. Amen. And we believe this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 